Hello, hello. It's time for a mid-year book freakout. Uh, except I'm not really freaking out. Um, it's, it's actually been, uh, well, actually, it's been too hot to freak out, to be honest, lately. Um, but yes, yes, this is a chance to kind of look back on my year and say, hey, what have I read? What have I read? I read sort of 36-ish, something like that books, which, you know, for some is, would be a lot. And for this neck of the book too would be nothing at all um but let's let's get into the into into the into these ta into these questions uh number one what's the best book you've read so far in 2021 uh that would be don quixote by uh cervantes yeah yeah that's that's probably there's no there's no particular uh, contest there uh number two the best sequel you've read so far in 2021. Uh, that's probably The Gangster by uh, Scott Sigler, a uh, continuation in the Galactic Football League series. And we're in book like number six of that series, and it's still actually going pretty strong. Um, I had some questions about that, but of the series that I've read, that definitely would be my, that would be my favorite uh, for the uh, series that I've continued on. Though I'm in the middle of um, Murderbot Diaries at the moment, so maybe it'll change it mere moments after I finish this finish this one um, number three a new release you haven't read yet but want to I don't know I guess I'll find out uh, number four most anticipated release for the second half of the year I uh, don't know guess I'll find out um, number five uh, the biggest disappointment um, probably there there by Tommy Orange uh, in that uh, it had be, I'd gotten a lot of praise on BookTube, so I guess it was, it was kind of built up enough there that you know I had I had a certain number of expectations, uh, and actually it went along really well. But I didn't I I the ending just I didn't didn't do it for me. I, I I thought the ending I thought the ending was a disappointment, and that's I I guess the thing is like a book kind of goes like that, and it's like, oh but yeah the ending just didn't do it for me. Um, number six, uh, the biggest surprise. So, um, biggest surprise negatively would be Toronto LeBlanc, uh, Jeanat Martorell, which isn't disappointment. Uh, it's just that, uh, Toronto LeBlanc, which is a book of chivalry written in 1490, uh, just had some stuff in it that was really, um, I really enjoyed the book, and I'm actually I've actually have downloaded a, a, a an unabridged uh, version of the book. You know, put my money where my mouth is, and actually gotten the thing. But it was a book that was um, it's it was definitely something that's written at the height of of war between uh, the West and uh, between Islam, and as a result, has some really horrific stuff in it. Uh, and I mean. There's one way I can understand that my 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 parents English, and were you know raised during uh, World War Two, and so they had there was you know still some kind of very strong feelings about Germans because they were fully immersed in the propaganda of that era, uh, but there's that kind of nastiness, um, even more so in Toronto Blanc, and the other thing is just the. Um, is is unfortunately that the, the the central relationship in Toronto LeBlanc uh is one that really is um is non consensual is non consensual uh in that really in in the in that you force a woman and she will come around and she will love you which is really really vile <laughs> really vile stuff um so that's probably the biggest disappointment. Um, yeah, I, I'm an emotional reader. There's an intellectual side that's like, okay, look, that's that's what this era was. This these are the times, but it can't help but feel have an emotional reaction to it. And I think if I didn't, I wouldn't. Why would I be reading anything in the first place? My biggest positive, my biggest biggest best surprise, was Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca. Ecuesi, which I came to through Canada Reads, a uh, tale of uh, two, two sisters and their mother. Uh, and that was definitely the, the, the biggest, you know, the biggest surprise of like, wow, this was a really, really good book that I really enjoyed and that um, was nourishing. 
Uh, you know, it's a book with a lot of food in it, but it was like that 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 was a, that was a nourishing book. Uh, number seven, uh, new author. And I mean, I could easily say Francesca Ecuese there, uh, but I'll go with Beryl Bainbridge, uh, The Birthday Boys, uh, one of my first of my um, of my booktube spin spin picks. Uh, and um, she's a favorite for me because, hey, she's someone who she's had her career. She has passed away. And there are 17 more novels of hers that I could pick up and read. And uh, that's that's got to be a good that's got to be a good thing. Um, and Birthday Boys is actually at the later later part of her career. So it'd be interesting to go back and try some of her earlier books or trying to pick where where in there to go. You don't have to be a completist. Like you just pick the best and enjoy. Uh, number eight, uh, newest fictional crush I don't really have one this year. I, I, I argue back and forth in this. There's, there's nothing that comes to my mind for that. Uh, number nine, uh, the newest favorite character. Uh, that would probably be William Stoner from A Stoner by John Williams. Um, yeah, yeah, he was, he was the great reader. He is somebody who is a reader, that a reader depicted in literature. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, really, really, yeah. Yeah, that would that would be. Even though that 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 novel is, I'm still running over that novel in my head, and there's problems I have. But that that William Stoner is definitely, I think, my newest favorite character. Um, number ten, uh, books that books that made you cry. And for that, actually, I'll go with a short story that I just finished, uh, which was uh, "Dream of a Ridiculous Man" by Fyodor uh, Dostoevsky, which is. Uh, this ridiculous guy who's thinking about killing himself. He uh, there's a like a, he comes he he runs across a little girl who's like begging for him to come and help him help her mother and she, and she just he just shoves her away because he doesn't want to because he knows if he if he cares enough about that he won't go home and kill himself and so he does he just drives her off and she has to go off to someone else and he goes home. Uh, and he has a dream, and he has a dream about going to an alternate Earth that is a, a, an Earth that's not fallen. Um, it's very much kind of a religious allegory, but of, of people who are live in a static love. And um, yeah, yeah, I think that's the story that made... Uh, It's not made me cry. That just that's that's the story that uh, touched me the most. That I that come that comes to mind when I'm thinking about that. Uh, number eleven, a uh, book that made you happy. Uh, a lot of books make me happy. Uh, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Uh, just um, you know, a very kind of talky, kind of very kind of um, um, working things out kind of a book, but working things out about the idea of, of, you know, how we act in the world, uh, how the possibilities of, for, for people in the world. That made me happy. And yes, Butter Honey and Butter Honey Pig Bread by uh, Francesca Ecuesi, uh definitely uh, very much made me happy. Made me, it's like, uh, it's, it's um, books that can have happy endings that are like, this makes sense. Um, that makes me very happy. That that's a possibility out there that there can be happy endings. Uh, number twelve, most beautiful book you've bought this year or received. I don't think I've I haven't bought any physical books this year. I haven't been to an actual physical bookstore. I might actually get to a physical bookstore today. I don't know. I'll see. Um, but um, all my books have been like ebooks or audio books and stuff like that. I mean, I guess Don Quixote that that copy of Don Quixote I have and I bought that years ago um number 11 what books do you need to re read by the end of the year i don't need to read any books by the end of the year but i'm obsessively going to pick up a book after the next book after the next book after the next book i have to i just have to um yeah 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 i mean um yeah that's that's it i'm a reader and you you just, I, I'm, I don't have to read anything, but I'm going to read. I'm going to read, you know. So, yeah, this was a tag that was created back in the day by uh, Ellie at Earl Grey Books, who is still booktubing and still does videos and stuff like that. And uh, Chami, who is someone who has blown up to be, I guess, a big, 
well, in rel in booktube terms, is now transcended booktube and is doing other non booktube stuff and is thus has a giant audience. Uh, and I'll leave links down to them below. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's my my year so far. I'm always like, oh, you know, I haven't read very much, or oh, no, mostly it's I haven't read very much because I'm I'm soaking in the booktube in 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 booktube land where you know people are reading 36 books in a <laughs> in a couple of months, not 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 in half a year. But uh, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy. Uh, I'm happy uh, that I'm a reader. Yeah, and that I found William Stoner, another fellow reader. All right, um, and yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there. More videos later.